Deep within the Arctic Circle lies the most dangerous place you could think of to sail a ship. <laughs> It is a maze of islands and drifting ice, where channels open without warning and close again as fast. <laughs> Nature here, one sailor wrote, is like a living malevolent beast. This ice maze stretches for a thousand miles across the Canadian Arctic, and finding a route across it, the fabled Northwest Passage, was the holy grail of exploration for more than 400 years. But of all the hundreds of attempts, two are legends in themselves. The first, led by Sir John Franklin, was the climax of Victorian Britain's passion for conquest, as arrogant and heroic as any expedition in history. Get up! Get up! The second, led by the Norwegian Roel Amundsen, was a penniless venture in a tiny second-hand fishing boat. But so revolutionary, it tore up the rule book of exploration. Both men would pay a devastating price in their battle with the ice maze. In the spring of 1845, the largest and most lavishly supplied expedition ever to sail in search of the Northwest Passage headed towards the Arctic, certain that this prize was theirs for the taking. But the fate of this expedition was to become one of the most enduring mysteries of British history. It was last sighted heading for the ice, then the two ships and 129 men simply vanished off the face of the earth. More than 40 search expeditions scoured the Arctic in the decade that followed, but no survivors were ever found, nor any trace of their ships. Only now, more than 150 years later, has a group of scientists and historians uncovered an extraordinary new trail of clues. It's really one of the most remarkable bodies of evidence we have, from eyewitnesses who actually saw what happened. I think this evidence is strongly suggestive of cannibalism among these Franklin crew members. It was a feeling of shock, really, or amazement that these sailors from the last century, there they were. Based on this evidence, these experts will try to reconstruct the last journey of Franklin and his men. The search for the Northwest Passage dated back to the 16th century. Some of the greatest names in exploration, men like Hudson and Frobisher, each tried and failed to find a route through the ice. The dream they were chasing was a trade route that would link Europe and Asia, not by the long route round the Horn, but by sailing a ship across the Arctic. The problem was just that it was probably the most dangerous shortcut in the world. The Arctic is an archipelago of islands with ice in between, and the ice is constantly moving. It's a puzzle, it's a matrix, like a maze. The winds are blowing the ice around, the currents are pushing the ice, and for a ship to traverse that was next to impossible. The ice flows are grinding together. They would open up and make a nice open water lead and a ship would sail down it. And suddenly the, the, the wind shifts, the ice closes in on them and they're trapped. They can't go backwards, they can't go forwards. For 300 years, the ice defeated every challenger. But then, in 1845, a nation that had conquered half the globe refused to accept that this stubborn piece of wilderness could defeat them. A new British voyage in search of the passage was announced under the command of Sir John Franklin, a 59-year-old former polar explorer, hoping for one last shot at glory before retirement. His expedition was to be the best funded and best equipped in the history of the passage. A showcase of the Victorians' ability to master nature with technology.
Franklin ships, the Erebus and the Terror, were supplied with the very latest inventions. Tin cans to keep their meat supplies fresh, boilers to heat their cabins, iron plates to protect their hulls, and 15-ton locomotive engines to part even the thickest ice. You can sense the extraordinary confidence of people who'd pushed back the frontiers of nature through the glories of the Industrial Revolution, this might that they suddenly had at their disposal. And so they built up this force in two great ships reinforced by steel, and this would be their fortress. As the ships set sail, the Times reported, with all the advantages of modern science, the expedition may be attended with great results. The possibility of failure was barely discussed. In the 40 years before the Franklin expedition, they haven't had a disaster yet. They've come very close to disaster, but almost dying has a nasty habit of, of actually confirming you in your ways. It makes you proud of yourself for having survived. A month later, the ship stopped at Greenland to load final supplies. Though Franklin hoped to make it across the Arctic that summer, he was equipped to spend three winters in the ice. And that was the sting to the passage. Explorers not only had to navigate a thousand mile labyrinth of ice and land, they had to do it against the clock. In the three short months of summer, when channels opened through the ice. On the 28th of July, 1845, the expedition passed a British whaling ship as they headed for the ice. The captain reported the men were in remarkable spirits, expecting to finish the operation in good time. It was the last undisputed sighting of Franklin and his men alive. Something happened to that expedition within the ice maze. Something that seemed to pluck them from the face of the earth. How could the largest and best equipped expedition in Arctic history simply disappear? It is a mystery that's become an obsession for men like historian Russell Potter. Potter has come to the Arctic on the trail of clues that might reconstruct the path of the expedition. Over the past 150 years, the snow and ice have gradually given up fragments of evidence, and the first are here, near the Inuit settlement of Resolute. It's one of the most tremendously haunting stories, maybe the greatest unsolved mystery of the 19th century. Two ships, 129 men, where have they gone? Uh, there's evidence scattered almost all over this map. Uh, you have some graves here, a whaleboat here, skeletons on the beach here. So it's about as close as you can get to the feeling of actually being in the path of the Franklin Expedition. The first clue to the route Franklin took when he reached the ice lies at a site four hours skidoo ride north of Resolute. It was evidence of a winter camp and it was first discovered five years after the expedition disappeared. The searchers found the first traces of the Franklin expedition here on Beachy Island. They found signs that tents had been erected, a uh, place where a smithy or anvil had been set up, uh, even some attempt to build a garden up on the shingle. But the most telling relics of all were the graves of three of Franklin's young sailors. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Sitting here with these graves, uh, we know they were here. It's just a